Welcome back to The Elaborators, episode 36, believe it or not. It is Simon here, producer Simon sometimes. Today I'm host Simon again. Uh, I was going to get Justin in the seat and then he had a great family need, so off he went and here I am. Um, This week we are going to talk about living generously still and in particular with this one I've got some special guests today. I'm going to bring them in early by pressing all the buttons. There they are, look at those lovely people. You're allowed to speak. I oh, hey. you muted me before. Yeah, I didn't no, know what to do. You're all good now. Hey, do you have one of those buttons at home, Simon? Yeah. A mute button? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 I should probably frame that with some context at some point in this <laughs> episode. Like um, but I do have Pastor Stan in the chair over there. We all know Pastor Stan. He's been around for a long time in the Elaborators podcast. I will, yeah, I'll just I, I'll I, stick I to the podcast. Escape, I can't escape. Right. <laughs> I won't talk about life. Oh, hey. <laughs> And we have <laughs> Beck Young here in the middle. Full disclaimer, she's my wife. Yep. Um, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> that's okay. Yeah, she's the better half. So is she your wife or are you her husband? Oh, I'm definitely her husband. In society, how do you get introduced? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Simon well, Beck. Yeah, I mean. it is Simon Beck, yeah. generally. I remember the first that time. That sounds when, better. When my granddaughter, Hattie, turned two years old, uh, there was a birthday party for all of her friends and everything. And I was introduced as Hattie's pop pop. There we yeah. go. You know, so it's like, oh, I have no identity yeah. anymore. No. She is the known quantity. Yeah. Yep. Ne- anyway, so that, that's what I was getting at. Next yeah. gen breaking through. Yep, yep. Anyway, yep. anyway, carry on. Carry Thank on. you. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> um, but we're here today. Yes, living generously is our topic for the last few weeks, and here at Werribee Baptist Church for the last last few Sundays. And today we are talking about professional skills, careers, knowledge, and being generous with those in church and community worlds. And also just a little bit of going the other direction with our church life and our faith and being generous with that in the secular world, Mm. I suppose. Mm. Is it called the secular world? Yeah, I I think so. Professional world. The the real world. The real world. (laughs) (laughs) This isn't the real world. (laughs) (laughs) Who knows where that might go? Stay out of that rabbit hole. So, so, but as a little bit of an introduction, this Mm. is Beck's first time on the Well, if we're going professional, I'm Rebecca. Okay. At work, actually. That's the email, Rebecca Young. It's Rebecca Young. Right. Okay, Rebecca. (laughs) But you can call me back. (laughs) Thanks. Uh, (laughs) What is it that you do? Oh, what is it that I don't do? No, I am um, a teacher by trade, but currently um, an assistant principal uh, at a local public school, Prep to Nine um, in Wyndham, Growth Corridor, uh, huge enrolments, lots of transient families. um, And yeah, just the many hats, I guess, that comes with working in a school mm-hmm. at the moment. Um, not so much teaching anymore, but uh, leading and um, upskilling and coaching and managing and administrating. Um, the grown-ups, yeah. not the kids. That's just the staff, yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Wow. Um, it, is a, it is honestly uh, every day is different. Um, but, yeah, love it to be. It's every single day. Do you miss the little kitties? I or still get to the see the little kitties. So at the moment I'm head of prep to two. So I, I do get to see the really cutesy ones every single day. Tie their, tie their shoelaces? No, I don't do that. No? No, I have a rule. No. Any teacher will educate, tell you. You've got to educate Stan on the Any teacher will tell you never tie a shoelace. Why? Well, i got to know. If, you ever, have you ever, if they ask you, you go down and tie up their shoelace and it's wet. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. We don't tie shoelaces. Yeah, so very okay, quickly yeah. I would tell graduate teachers to put a shoelace <laughs> monitor in place. A shoelace monitor. <laughs> yes. Lucky so they tie each other's shoes. Yep. Yeah. Yes. That was the shoelace monitor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's a big responsibility. But anyway, yeah. No, so, so, okay. Yeah, so I do. assistant principal of a <laughs> yeah. prep to two. How did we yeah. get there? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry. It was the little ones. I absolutely yeah. love being with the kids and I get to uh, – I go into classrooms on a daily basis. Um, I – yeah, know pretty much the name of every child that is under me. Yeah. Um, so, I, yeah, it's 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 not that I don't get to be with them. I'm just not with them full time in a classroom anymore. So fun question for both of you then, knowing mm. that. What would you be doing if you weren't doing what you're doing right now? Oh, easy. Okay. Disney princess. Oh, like as in dress up at Disney World? No, like no, they're not actually, actually dressed up. Be a, sorry, they're not dressed up, are they? Just, <laughs> no, I'd like no. When I when I was little, when I grow up, I want to be okay. a Disney princess. Yep. And I thought that was achievable, but got all the hallmarks of a Disney princess. I didn't get the right end to school. No. Um, but no, I don't know what I would do if mm. I wasn't teaching. I feel like it would have to be something around people. It would have to be something that changed and evolved on a daily basis. I couldn't 
do the same job, mm-hmm. same thing every day, repetitive. Um, mm. Yeah. Stan would say, come on down to Wherever Baptist Church. <laughs> where every day is a new day. Well, yeah, well, 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 it's well. probably a very similar context. Yeah, well, that my mind just went 14 different places. <laughs> and I had to come back to a couple of them. But anyway, uh, I reckon if I didn't do what I did now, I'd be a burden on society. Because <laughs> I don't know how to do anything different. Yep. Yeah. But uh, w- when I was younger, I actually thought that uh, I-, I might uh, uh, go uh, become a lawyer. Okay. Mm-hmm. Barista. Mm-hmm. Right, no, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. or a barista. <laughs> well, I, I do, but, a yeah, yeah, I do a bit of all that now, anyway. So, yeah. right, yeah. You're <laughs> a, but in your in your spare time, you're a you're a um, umpire, um, umpire, yeah, um, yep. umpire of. Uh, well, I umpire baseball, but uh, more than baseball, I officiate uh, gridiron. Right, American football. Yeah, right. so he jumps on the plane and goes mm. over there, refs the game. Yeah, and then that's it. No, no, no. They actually do play gridiron in Australia. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I they, think. Um, I think for myself, I if I, I like the outdoors, I'd probably be in like landscaping, mm. maybe landscape architects or gardeners, something like that. I think would be a good combo of my skill sets. Okay. And you uh, get I to do that, that here. Oh well, I did do Come that. Come do here. my garden. Oh wait, yeah. it's your garden. Yeah. <laughs> um, right. Well, so in terms of looking back on the career for you, mm. Beck, what um, this only has to be real, real quick answer in theory, but what kind of types of skills have you? Like you can look back on now and say, oh, yeah, well, I've got this. I've been equipped with this now. Mm, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So I guess um, I guess I look at that question as a it actually wouldn't matter what the job was that yeah. I was in. But, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's more the, the, the skills or the, the personality types, the Enneagrams, whatever you want to call it, um, that, are, that are kind of prominent or higher in me. Um, and I think that for me it is around creative thinking. Mm-hmm whether that be just thinking outside the square um, or or actually kind of building, making, creating. Um, and I think that comes in really handy in a school um, currently <laughs> needing to just think out of the, outside the box to kind of solve solve problems like, you know, teacher shoulders, timetabling, all of that kind and of stuff. And wet shoestrings. And wet shoelaces, yeah. Velcro. Um, hence the shoelace monitors. Yep. I feel like that was pretty creative. Yeah. Um, but also, I mean, right from an early age, I was probably um, pre-teaching, pre-uni, probably even in high school, um, you know, that the idea of leadership skills and things were always highlighted in me by others um, and, and built into and, you know, the capacity was built there from an early age um, and I had no – kind of problems leading and influencing mm-hmm. people um, in a sense of, you know, here's here's what we're going to do, come and follow me and let's do it together and, and people would jump on board. Um, I'm a very collaborative person, love to get groups of people together working on the same projects and, and moving in the same direction. So I think that all of those things together have probably taken me from a, a teacher in a classroom and then kind of to the position that I am now. Um, yeah, just it's same, same, but different. Yep. Um, and yeah, transferable <coughs> skills, I guess. So Stan, taking what, um, some of the skills and things we all have, um, in, I'm going to throw to a biblical verse here. Uh Oh, okay. The <clears throat> Bible. The Bible. We do bring it out in the podcast every okay. now and then. Every now and then. Yeah, <laughs> we do. We, do try. We, we are Bible people. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so in, uh, so while I check my notes as to which verse I was going to read, the Romans 12, 6, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you blah, 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 then go and do blah, blah, blah really well. <laughs> that's yeah. the that's Simon. Good. That's the yeah. paraphrase. That's the right? paraphrase. Good job. The Simon good version. Job. You got it exactly right. Yeah, a bit yeah. of yada, yada, yada in there. <laughs> yeah. Um, so having like, mm. you know, with what the skills, Beck's learned, yeah. the biblical direction of that, how do we intersect those things for the good of the gospel. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's a great question. As she was listing off the different things that she does, um, my mom was thinking, okay, that's not preaching, that's not singing, so it doesn't fit in the church, right? Right. <laughs> right. That's what you think. But yeah. no, it's in all seriousness, the, everything that you talk about there, inspiring people to come along and follow mm. me and do this, and, and and your desire to get things organized and, and done properly mm. and in order and everything— we need those everywhere in the mm. church and ministry in general and in, in Christian life because we, we don't want – I think Christians may uh, sometimes have a bad rap of, of not caring about uh, structure and organization and all those things and mm-hmm. even leadership. Uh, but actually it's a high value for us. And, and 
my mind goes back to uh, over the last few years since I actually started pastoring the church that this podcast emanates from is I've had conversations with both of you guys and with Beck specifically about the idea of vocational ministry. And every time I have that conversation with Beck, I say, I don't want to have this conversation with you, though, because I love what you're <laughs> doing out there, sure. you know, yeah. because the skill set that she has would be brilliant and beautiful here. And we do utilize her as a volunteer and, mm. and a lot of things she's talking about, even at the school, we're uh, putting her into our kids ministry to uh, try to develop some things there, especially about the West Shoelaces. <laughs> Sorry, that's just stuck now. It's going it's, it's to be a <laughs> blown stance mind. Sermon yeah. illustration one day. Yep. Anyway. Never again. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, so, so it, it, it's just a, a natural transition. Mm. And I think a lot of people don't understand that. They think if you can't get up there and sing, if you can't get up there and preach or, or you know, something like that, or you can't work in the uh, kids' ministry or youth ministry, that your, your gifts and abilities aren't usable. Well, in Scripture, it tells us that all these different gifts, gifts of leadership and administration and mercy and all, all fit. So, so yeah. yeah. So, so to carry on a, a little bit there then, what, what can it do as, as us being a witness? Like what impact can it have in the, in the workplace and things, taking those gifts in there? Taking the gifts into... Into the secular world. Into the workplace. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Yeah, what's, like, what's the, what is that witness? What does it achieve? Right, well... I, <laughs> Perfect example. It was when uh, about a month ago, um, Beck actually, in her workplace, uh, there was a colleague who had lost her husband who had passed away in mm -hmm. December. And because of her faith, she had connections here at the church mm -hmm. and she used her organizational skills and yeah. leadership skills and even stage presence skills on the day yep. to, pro to, to provide an amazing memorial uh, for this family. And it was beautiful and great, and many, many people from from her school and from and the friends and everything. Uh, most of the people that came to that funeral would not be people that would come to church. Sure. Um, and so that's just a great testimony, and it allowed back to to be up front and to show them what Christians can do for you, and it allowed our church to be uh, a blessing to the people as well, uh, our facilities and yeah. things. So. Mm. And Beck, is there anything that comes to your mind other than that? Example that you're able to. Um, yeah, I guess I'm really passionate about working in a in a secular industry. Um, I guess I I kind of grew up in a sense in, in um, ministry from kind of my teenage years. My mum was really involved in church, and I could have very easily, you know, I went to a Christian school, could have very easily gone down the the route of just kind of staying in that that mm -hmm. Christian environment. Um, but I was really really passionate about being in the secular. Um, industry, I guess, um, uh, the idea of being, you know, a light mm -hmm. in a, in a dark mm. place. Um, and I mean, no matter where you are, whether it's in a church, in a, in a Christian school, um, there is absolutely always going to be a group of people with need. Um, but I guess in the area that I'm teaching in, um, in, in yeah, I, I guess that I can see that there is such a need. Um, not just for Christ, but just for love and compassion and for care. Mm. Um, and, and me being there, I feel like is the beginning of me being able to serve them and, and give them that. And, th and that's just the families. That's not to mention the staff that mm -hmm. I'm getting to yeah. kind of witness to on a daily basis. I mean, I've been able to invite people along to wonder each year, mm. um, and staff will come along, um, plenty of people. And, and you know, I, I work for a, a government department agency where I'm, you know, I'm not necessarily allowed to really kind of to, to speak the gospel and speak my mind openly in a work setting. Um, however, like I have so many people come and ask me, um, you know, for prayer or for advice, or can I ask you a question about this? Or, hey, I've been following your church on YouTube, or, hey, um, I saw you post something on Instagram and I've been following and you're talking about this this Bible 
plan thing. Like, you know, how, how do I get that? Right. So I've actually at work when wow. requested have been able to sit with somebody and actually help them download the, the U version, yep. the Bible app on their phone and things. So for me, that that's kind of those moments. So the, that's why I'm here. And now when hundreds of here. people <laughs> hear, hear this in the yeah. podcast, they're going to be lining up back. Can you show me the Bible app? Can you show right? me how to do that? <laughs> so, yeah. So, and I'll happily so, yeah. do that. <laughs> but no, it's, it, it, it's so beautiful. And I sincerely mean that when, when I've tried to recruit back mm. sort of, I yeah. always back away because she's <laughs> doing such a fantastic job yeah. in the secular world. She she's a great witness out there, yeah. and yeah, it's it's not for everybody. Mm. You know, there there are great teachers, yeah. uh, Christian yeah. schools, and everything. Absolutely, uh, but some people, I, I believe, you're one of them, mm. are called into that space, and, yeah. and it's an actual ministry that you get paid for. Yeah, you know, yep. a vocational yep. job and everything. Yeah, but it's uh, yeah, it's yeah. a beautiful thing. And I take, I guess, I take that part of it really seriously as well. Obviously, the job is is why I'm there, and the kids and things are why I'm there. But I do have that kind of extra little, I guess, calling on on the back of that that you know being in that in that space mm. and and the fact that I'm there for a reason and in that that place at this time. Right. And that's I I like all of that because one one of my questions was going to be what the people that don't have the the cookie cutter skills to drop into a church like mm. A vet, yeah, right, or a, or a <laughs> truck driver, yes, or something, right? Like that's true. You know, these kind of these kind of yeah. careers mm. are like, well, how do I take that into the church? But yeah. it's actually what we're getting at is there's so many other yeah, character driven skills. Yep. Just mm-hmm. don't ask me about a vet, a vet? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> right? You know, you don't. If there's any vets in the church, come and ask Stan. <laughs> yeah, what, what you can do, right? right. What, what I'm sure do. there are skills that you use in veterinary medicine, though, that yeah. are transferable. Absolutely. Just maybe not with Think the about h- empathy, hugging cats though. and dogs. The right, empathy right, right. that you would yep, need yep. to deal with when, you know. Mm-hmm. I can't hurting can't. cats is like hurting kids. <laughs> in the, in hurting <laughs> wet shoelaces. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so are there, what, are, what are some um, barriers to using our skills in the church setting? I was trying to think through this mm. question. Like what, you know, I, I guess one of the things for me, I, or one of the things that came to mind for me is I'm, I'm not a industry trained production technician person that's working on big concerts. But I could imagine, having already experienced it here in the role here, wandering into a church, being used to working on $50,000 this and $100 million that, mm. and then not being able to use, you know, like that that barrier of like, how can I bring my skill down to mm. the consumer level? Yeah. Like, is that a, is that a, would that resist, would somebody resist doing that? Are there barriers to bringing these skills into the church? Oh, well, certainly I I think you're going to have a mix of people. Everybody's different. Some people are going to come in and and they've Mm -hmm. done the million dollar stuff and they're going to be frustrated and they're going to want the church to spend money on those things. And then of course you've got everybody else in the church that are Mm -hmm. going to say, don't spend $2 on the light, but. Or everybody uh, spend $10,000. Right, right, right. So, so you're going to have those people, but I, I think more than not, people First of all, they don't realize that what they're doing actually mm. could be used in a church setting because churches have lights and sound and, yeah. and multimedia and streaming yep. and all that stuff. And they would look at the church thing, and it, it would be probably a fair bit simpler than mm. what they are used to and everything. Yep. And I, actually, I think that that would be uh, energizing for them because the pressure would be less, mm. uh, e- even though it's it, the, the stakes are high and it's very important and what we produce is a, a great product and everything. We, we, we want that. Mm. That's a value for us is excellence. Mm. But they could do it probably with their eyes closed a bit, other than the frustrations of having to gaffer tape everything together right. sometimes. Yeah, yeah, turn it off and on again. <laughs> yeah. um, and I'd, I'd probably add to that, um, you know, just staying in this specific, Career example, I guess the opportunity for them to upskill everybody else. Oh, that's what I was going to say. As volunteers, as the, co- the coach in me and the mentor in me kind of says, you've got the opportunity to build the capacity of the people here who are um, not necessarily working in your industry, but are just potentially a little bit, you know, intrigued by it or, or yep. kind of want to help out. So, be, you know, being able to bring your skill, and it might not be that you're working at the at the level of where you're at, but you might be building up five other people under you, um, yeah. and that is. That that excites me. And you may have access to used stuff that might be cheap too. So. <laughs> yeah, we won't say no to that. A bit of, bit of context and networks yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So, so Stan, on, uh, on the Sunday just gone when we were recording this podcast, you talked about ownership and stewardship mm. of our gifts 
and and not even just of our everything. gifts of everything. Yeah. The money we've been blessed with, and the everything time and on talents. the planet yeah. is God's, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. and how we use that. Um, so how does that impact? You know, we we talk about all these skills we have, all these skills I have. Is it is it more so? It's what we should be doing is all these skills God has given. Mm. Yep. And then how does that impact how we use them? Yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, as soon as you understand that it's not about you, but it's stuff that God God has given you. There's so many facets to this. There's you, your stewardship. It's like okay, God gave me that, so it's His, and I've got to steward it well. I got to take care of it. I've got. I need to protect it, mm. but I also need to use it well. Uh, but then there's also it eliminates uh, pride, you know, from getting in the way. It's like mm-hmm. okay, anything I'm good at, well, that's God. And, uh, you know, anything I'm doing poorly, that's because I'm messing it up and I'm not yeah. doing what God wants me to do, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. So I, th- I think those are a couple of areas uh, that, that's really important. But the, the biggest one is if you got something, if God's gifted you, if he's given you or he's given you resources, mm-hmm. if he's given you finances, yeah. if he's mm-hmm. given you, uh, you know, a great house that could host a life group or, you know, whatever he's given you, you really need to think hard about not using that. You know, if you sure. if you're not using that for him, then you gotta ask, why am I not using that for him? Why did he give it to me? That might mm-hmm. be a really good question. Why did he give me this? Yeah, I agree. We we kind of, I mean, even early on in our marriage, we were both at uni. We, you know, finances were kind of tough, and and straight at the right at the start of that time, we were kind of looking at right. We might not have the money, <laughs> you know, to be able to throw at things, but like what else could we throw? So then it was all right, our time and mm-hmm. let's get involved in this and let's get involved in that. And and we had a, we were renting a house at the time that we were able to actually open up. We had a house church running and it was that kind of thing that we were, you know, it was about using what we had. Um, and obviously you, you know, gain and whether it's knowledge or, or resources along the way. Um, and yeah, I guess just reevaluating over and over, like, what have I got? What am I, where am I currently? What could I be doing with it? How could I better be serving? So is it, with it? is it strong enough language to say, are reasons excuses? Like these are the reasons that I haven't got, um, you know, people around in my house or these are the reasons that I haven't got that. Are they, do we need to... F- see those as excuses and then change our lifestyles well, well, to turn them into... For, for instance, you say about the house, mm-hmm. the house size. Um, I mean, you, you guys were doing a house church when you were renting a small place, you know, that, you know, so that's going to blow this out. But some people's houses probably aren't really set up to equip mm-hmm. an, a small group or a life group of 20 people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so that would be actually a reason. Yeah. But they could also stick their hand up and say, you know what, we can't host, but we can facilitate. Mm. You sure. Know, or things like that. So if you're not involved in a life group at all because your house is too small, well, that's an excuse. Yep. If you're not hosting it at your house, that's a reason. Okay. So it could, it could yeah, be, like that. yeah, there's valid ways both times, but I think most of the time we're going to lean towards making excuses. Yeah, we're pretty good at that. <laughs> and and uh, one, of, one of my heroes um, uh, in leadership and uh, church ministries, his name's Craig Groeschel, and he said, you can make progress or you can make excuses, but yeah. you can't make them both. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's good. Um, so, okay, I've got another verse for you here. The Bible twice oh, in the man. episode. Ooh. Twice. Uh, no, we do, do, we do, we do pretty good. Uh, Matthew five sixteen. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Are we allowed to say no? Are we allowed to say no? Like, like if, we, if yeah. we're at capacity, man, we've got no time. Yeah. I've got this. I can't do this. Mm. Can we say no? Yeah, you, you can say no to anyone except me. Yeah, oh, okay. right. <laughs> no. which is why I'm no, here. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. So, sometimes you actually should say no. Mm. And I've actually talked about this uh, uh, in a church context before that there, there are people in the church who are actually serving too much, mm-hmm. um, where they're involved in too many ministries. And you can even observe potentially the neglect of family and other things in their life uh, because they're just so mm. passionately committed to Church, in fact, I was talking to somebody who wants to get more involved this year. They want to be a high-capacity person. And I challenged this person about their spouse. I said, so where's your spouse with all this? Right. You know, and it was like, uh, uh, uh. You know, I said, well, it can't be uh, uh, uh. It's got to be I uh, love your heart, love your passion, but bring the spouse along with you. At least get them affirming and, and you know, on board with this. So, so there's times you, you should say no. Uh, if someone asked me uh, to lead worship on Sunday— I should say no, <laughs> right? Because that's not my gift. Bex, Bex laughing in agreement. Right. I was just thinking about the sound tech who might just, you know, hey. I mean, you could do it. But. 
<laughs> if we have the right people in the right jobs, it would sound great. So that's so that's um, talking time and talking mm. misplaced talent. Yep. What about like I do it all week. Mm. It's hard to do it again on the weekend. That's I've been right. there. I've been there. Yep. When I was a graduate, um, you know, and you're with kids, and this was pre before my own kids, but, you know, you're with kids five days a week as a teacher um, and there's that idea of like I, I don't think I could bring myself to doing it one more day. Um, I just can't. Um, and I guess, yeah, I mean, at the start that that was a job um, and but then what I think I, I had to learn really quickly was um, where my passions were versus where, you know, my time card was. Mm -hmm. um, and I was actually really passionate about children and making sure that they were being, you know, in, you know instilled with um, knowledge and at, at school. But then I guess in a, in a kid's mean capacity as well. Um, so being able to, I guess, realign and it goes back to the following the, the previous question and that comes down to priorities. And I think as long as you can weigh up, um, you know, the, the options and, and prioritize and do they align with your values and do they align with, you know, your, your passions. And I think for me, one of those was kids. So it was a bit of a slap in the face to God for me to say, I'll do it for five days a week and get paid for it, but I'm not going to do it on a Sunday because, you know, I, I can't do it one more day. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. if it's a passion of mine, then my priorities are out. And I need to make sure I do it on the Sunday. And in fact, it did fill my cup and I really enjoyed it. It was very different to the school right. setting. <clears throat> yeah. Wow. Wow. That That's you, you went there hard. That's mm. good. I, I, I love that uh, because I, I was going to be more generous and gracious to, to those teachers and things that nah. say I can't do it another day a week. <laughs> well, it's funny. Uh, I, I, just, like it's easy. I think my brain naturally went to the teacher and kids yeah. one. Mm -hmm. um, because it's such a common um, mm -hmm. struggle versus yeah. like say even with the example I used before an, AV, an AV tech all week long mm -hmm. coming and doing it again. Um, but I think there's we've, we've covered a lot of other skills that could still come in as well even if it wasn't the teacher going into the kids' space. Yeah. A it's, barista. Mm -hmm. Well, a barista manager that's got lots of leadership skills yes, in a yes. space yeah. that needs a leader yeah, yeah. Yeah. is a good hole to fill yeah, as well. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, what were you going to uh, say? No, I was going to say like even with the teacher, I, I, I could actually get – if you're in a classroom five days a week, 25 kids, and mm. then we say we want you to go to kinder zone and there's 25 kids and, and that and that's you, especially if you're not as passionate about it from that for those reasons, because there are teachers that do yeah, it as a absolutely. job. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But you still do have skill sets and abilities that came along with that. And, and maybe it's in teacher training. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's uh, um, uh, Beck is our uh, church, our, our child safety officer in our church, and she's investigating some, mm -hmm. some things and all that about to make sure we're doing everything well. But it's also going to be true that as she's looking for child safety issues, she's also going to see practical things that she can just tell somebody, hey, this is yeah. a skill that I have that I could teach you, and and they're yeah. they're gonna make that she's gonna make them better kids leaders because of that. Mm -hmm. But she may not practically be doing kids ministry. Yeah, correct. Yeah, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's, I mean, it's exactly the same as what I'm doing right now. So being an assistant <laughs> principal, I'm yeah. not in the classrooms. I'm not there, but I'm living it and I'm in it every day. So it's not. Yeah. yeah so yeah. yeah, not currently serving in the kids min, but I'm in and around it and kind of yeah, looking at. I guess ways that we can tighten things up and and make things better, more effective, more like it's it's amazing, and we have a great kids program here. Um, but I know we we talk about this a lot, but just in general, one of the things I'm really passionate about in lots of different spaces is just how can we make it better? How can we make it better? Relentlessly, um, mm. so much so. Just how can we make it better? So yeah, yep. that that's kind of where I come at a lot of a lot of things from. So Stan, if if there's listeners, watchers. And they're like, well, how do I, where do I start? How do they actually, for them to bring their skills into the church in particular, where do we, how do we find out about them? Where do we, where do they start? All right. So if we're talking to our church audience here right now or any church, mm -hmm. um, I would suggest that they let the leadership know that they want to figure this out. Yeah. In our church context, we actually have a course for this called yep. Find Your Fit. People take the course, and then it identifies how they're wired and gifted and made and everything, and then we can follow them up and, and point them in the right directions. But the biggest thing I would tell them is get in somewhere and try it. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, it, it, that's how you're going to find. And you may try to be an AV tech and that may not be you. Mm-hmm. You try it a few weeks and you think, okay, this is just, you know. Too many buttons. Too many buttons. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Uh, or you try the greeting team and you're actually, you actually figure out you don't like people or, you know, those kind yeah. of things. Yep. But just try something and you will, by trial and error, end up landing on what fills your tank and, mm-hmm. and where you're gifted. So, yeah. Yep. And I'd probably also add, um, not in every scenario, but in many scenarios, different people will, there'll be a, they'll, they'll have an issue with something or they'll, they'll have spotted a hole somewhere mm-hmm. with something. Quite often, it's a hole that they recognize because they're good at yeah, they whatever know, they, is they missing. Know it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'd say that as well, that yeah. if, if mm-hmm. you know, you, there's this thing that really annoys you all the mm-hmm. time. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like, well, you might actually, maybe, you might you be the might person. You might be the one called to fix that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe yeah. just... <laughs> Be a little noisier yeah. in the feedback yeah. or whatever it might be, or rather than right. just it's the don't bring the problem, bring the solution, right? right. Like yeah. rather than just yeah. venting. Yeah. I like to say if you've got the burden, you got the job. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I think also At least to we start have with to... until he figure out that you're the totally <laughs> wrong person. <laughs> well, yeah. that kind of is exactly what I was going to say. I think sometimes you, we have to be have have courage enough to try something and know that it might not work. Um, I tried being on a camera once um, and I've got ADHD so I I don't do much for (laughs) long periods of time and um, the worship was great like I could track on the camera for that and then you know I had actually Simon switching and asking me and you know I was essentially asleep on the camera like it just was not the right job for me and for the way that my mind works so within a couple of tries of that like no, that's that, that's not the space for me. Um, and you we know, actually so moved you in that context yeah. onto the switcher, which, which yeah, had which actually really worked because yep. it's so fast, and you're kind of having to make decisions on the spot and change the camera angles, and um, so that was great. And I actually love that. And I had no audio visual training. That was just something that worked well for me in the way my brain was wired. But because you did spend that couple weeks on the camera. Mm. Now as a switcher, you can appreciate what the camera yeah, people are having to absolutely. do. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. And it helps me. So it me, wasn't wasted. Yeah, it actually, it, you're right. And it does help me kind of train and talk to the camera people while I'm doing that. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. I'm out of questions. Oh. And we're out of time. And we're out of time. Okay. This time is, uh, flies. Yeah, time does fly. Yeah. Um, but that's really good. I, we've, we like to finish off with a bit of a challenge application. We're starting that. Last week was... Encouraging people to do one more extra nice thing for somebody, an act of generosity in some way. Uh, hopefully everybody did that and can tell us about it. That'd be fun. But for this week, what I thought we could do is think about like trying to – like can we identify mm. the the skill or the, yeah. the hole or the the missing piece or what we can bring and then action it like – Let's let's all try and really think of if if you're not already in an active serving thing, or think about your profession, what you might be able to bring to the to the church, to the gospel, and the other way around. What can we, you know, what might I have picked up at church or in in my faith journey that I can take into my workplace? Yeah, I love mm. that. And you're right; it does go the opposite way. There's absolutely things that I've learned here at at church that I've been able to then go and implement um, in in a school setting. Right. Yeah. Right. It's good. Like love God and love people, right? That's it. And you can go into the school setting. Do both of those. Do, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, we yeah. would love to hear what those are. I'm going to press this. Oh, yeah. Wrong one. No, no, no. Oh, okay. You're cheering. <laughs> I'm applauding you guys. Oh, applauding back. Yeah, yeah back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can thank back. And then I'm going to press this one. There you go. That gets us a little music. And I can press that one as well for another applause. Thank you for being with us on the elaborators. Thank you for having Beck. me. Thank you, Pastor Stan, for coming no back. No worries. Everyone can comment and like and share. And hey, do the I say share, do the sharing because people see it they outside do. of your yeah. circle. It, it expands, yeah. and then you might get questions. And asked. Then people might ask you to download the Bible app. Yeah, Maybe they, they, you never know where it might go. So pay attention to our socials. Let us know what's going on. And don't touch on. any wet shoelaces. Yeah, don't Noted. touch any wet shoelaces. No. Wow. Get yourself a monitor. All right. Find a monitor that, that can be the, the headline of this podcast. <laughs> Steer clear of the shoelaces. Bye, everybody. Bye.